What time is it? It's Packard Folks at Time. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash Packard Folks at where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokes at and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at Stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokes at and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining me from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic 9. Hi, Captain Howdy sent a message and he said he's not quite sure he likes this show. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us from the, <laughs> the, the, the far east coast of Florida is Robin Dupree Reed. Hello, Captain Howdy is going to love me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and where's my swippy soup? <laughs> Still waiting. It's it's at the end of the uh, it's at the salad bar there. <laughs> Gross. If there was swippy soup on a salad bar, I would walk out. <laughs> well, this. Oh wait, a minute. maybe that's maybe no. that's pistachio. You serve yeah, that's to serve yourself. <laughs> it's it's the serve yourself stuff. <laughs> maybe that was pistachio. It was all green. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Oh God! Are you possessed or something? Jesus! Come on, come on, come on! That is actually the subject tonight. We're going to be talking about exorcisms, and exorcisms are us—not technically us, but us as a human race. People like to pre- pretend or think that they're possessed by demons. And supposedly somebody with magical powers, like a priest or something, because he uses special magic incantations, the power of Christ compels you to shop at Safeway. I don't know. Whatever. It's <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he says to do the thing and the, these demons that are supposedly inside you are scared of words. I'll tell you something right now. If I were a demon... I would not be scared of words. I mean, words can make me angry, but they're not going to scare me unless you say I'm going like, to shoot you or something, but that, that would be kind of scary. <laughs> it's the holy water, though. Oh, yeah. It's words and holy water. Yeah, well, there are some people who do like do not like to take a bath. I'm just saying. <laughs> it burns, though. If you didn't take a bath for like a month or something and they splash you with the holy water. <laughs> You so holy water fire. is acidic? <laughs> it's acid. <laughs> Wait, maybe it's... Wh- where does it come from? Holy uh, water? Oh, God. Yeah, the, the holy yeah. water... Okay. Oh, wait, I did... Let me tell you, I just recently read something okay. about holy water that they did some testing on it, mm-hmm. and they found all kind of creepy stuff in there, like oh, fecal yeah. matter and stuff like oh, yeah. that. Yeah, oh, because every you know it, it it's in a basin. When you go into the church, mm-hmm. there's like holy water in this like basin, right? Yeah, and everybody sticks their fingers in there and does the sign of the cross. If I remember from my Catholic school days, yep. So that means everybody that goes into the church is putting their hand in there, mm-hmm. right? And Germs. unfortunately, not everybody washes their hands in the world after they go potty. That's so, right. Oh, God. So anything that was on a person's hands, anything that could possibly be on a person's hands, is in the holy water. Yeah, church. Yes, yes, it is. Dawkins' dog in the chat room says, "Makes semen in the Starbucks cream seem credible now." <laughs> yep. <laughs> See. <laughs> oh God. Master Ew. Manning, he's my favorite. <laughs> now that now in the olden days, the holy water was the only clean water by comparison to what the the peasants and everything the people the the less fortunate would get because that was the, the because they got special privileges but 
nowadays, this is the dirtiest water you could be sticking your hands in. But that's not the the topic for tonight, unfortunately. We're more <laughs> pointing out how people who do these exorcisms are flourishing right now. And why, I don't know. Because I, my personal opinion on that is because people are becoming more, well, retarded. Uh, <laughs> they're believing more yeah. they're believing more crap because we've got such a large population and now we have the internet and it does allow us to fact check a lot of things but on the internet there's a lot of stuff that's factually wrong you can't trust everything that's on the internet some things you can some things you can you have to use a good filter on that to weed out the bad information unfortunately sometimes that's a little more difficult in fact there was a priest like last year or the year before he was doing exorcisms over Skype. They filmed one of these exorcisms. This guy on the other end is going, oh my God, blah, 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 fuck you, man. And he's pretending. I mean, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to, the power of Christ compels you to, to shoot out the demons from your body. And he's doing this like over Skype. And, and the thing was, the priest was charging money for this service. And people would pay him of to course. do this. Yes. <laughs> so like $600 or more, as I recall. I could be wrong on the amount. Jesus. But it, mm. anybody who performs an exorcist, I want to slap you in the face for being such a douchebag. Yeah. Because you're lying to the general public. Now, in the earlier days, in the earlier days before we had modern psychotherapy, this was actually a precursor to psychotherapy, which I found was actually kind of interesting. But nowadays, we know that people have mental problems and they need attention with trained medical staff, uh, sometimes psychotherapy, uh, drugs, or, or, or pharmaceuticals, I should say. And, you know, just good counseling to tell somebody that they are possessed because they do a thing like uh, they wash their hands constantly or they take things that don't belong to them. You don't, these are these are known medical conditions. There is no demon causing any of this bullshit. OK, let's talk. What what else we got on our plates on this? Well, as far as that goes, um, I was asking myself a lot of the same questions i'm like well why is it in this day and age we have a, such a resurgence of a belief that uh, demons can possess us and uh or or oppress us or infest houses or objects it doesn't seem to follow right except right. that uh, a lot of people aren't taught how to think skeptically first of all and there's a predisposition to believe that um our first instinct, our gut instincts are correct, and you're still somewhere in the recesses of our mind. We're believing in the boogeyman and afraid of the dark. It doesn't help that we've had this huge influx of movies since the 70s, uh, which deal with supposed real events, right? Demonic possessions. You, and, can, uh, I, I just <laughs> want to break in on for you just a second. Now, the, the yes. movie you're referring to is The Exorcist. And no, the first, I, that was the first biggest one, yes, yeah. in like 1973. Yeah. Now, a lot of people yeah. would say that they were coming out of the movies, and, and when I was in the role of the religion, people they would refer to this movie and say, well, people are coming out of the movie because they were getting possessed by the movie, and they were like getting all freaked out and everything like that. <laughs> now, the thing is, there was another movie that, that came out uh, about not even 10 years ago, five years ago maybe. It was called Avatar. You probably have heard of this. It was a very popular movie. People were several years later were having – depression because they had seen the movie and because they like oh they saw this idyllic world and they're like all depressed because they're not in this idyllic world and and everything like this movies can affect people but it affects their mind i mean it's it, it this is not new so people will believe something because of something they saw on tv or in a movie or whatever it doesn't make it true it just makes them very susceptible I myself, yeah. for example, uh, I don't watch horror movies. I just do not watch them because I know the effect that has on my on my brain. I know my own psychology that if I watch them like this, my brain's going to start going, ha, 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 I'm going to start fucking with you now. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I watched a very innocuous movie several months ago. No, it was the last year. I watched uh, The Rise of the Empire of the Apes. And that's not a horror movie, okay? It was a fun movie. I went to bed. I was sleeping, and my brain is like, okay, we're going to work out the problem. We're going to figure out this problem. We're going to figure out how to stop it from happening. I'm like, brain, go to sleep. It was a fucking movie. Leave it go. 
It was a fucking movie. See, this is how I know my own psychology. It was just a fun movie, but my brain's going, hmm, let's figure this out. I think we can figure this out. You know, it happens to everybody on some strange level. But well, some people... Connie hit the nail on the head when yeah. she said people are, aren't being taught to think skeptically. Right. Okay, because, I mean, I was honestly never taught to think skeptically mm-hmm. myself, but I always did. Like, I don't remember a time... I mean, I, that kind of stuff would scare me when I was a child. Mm-hmm. But even when I was a teenager, stuff like that didn't really scare me. I could sit through a scary movie mm-hmm. and it wouldn't really bother me because I just don't think about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it may not be movies. especially possession type things. Mm-hmm. For you, it might I not mean, be movies. It might be something else that happens in your everyday life. That he, Real know. human beings freak me out more. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because look yeah, at the... No, yes. Yeah. I'm doing quote fingers right now. But look at the evil mm-hmm. that human beings do to other human beings. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not possession. Right. That's just... A mental problem. Right. I mean, to me, anybody who murders another human being has to have some kind of mental problem. Right. What's yeah. the difference? Because all of us are capable of it. Every one of us is capable of picking up a gun and shooting somebody in the head. Mm-hmm. We can all do that. Yeah. yeah. There's something that we can all actually physically do. Right. So what is the difference between me and someone who is a murderer? Some kind of mental break. Right. Uh, yeah, and justify. You know, if you can uh, justify that action, you think that your your problem in your own your... head, you can justify it, right? right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's where the break happens. Is it really is? And I think and a that's... lot of it is a, is that exactly. It, it's a mental break, and some people there. There's this well, great we video. Can't believe that people are actually possessed by demons. No, I mean, no, there's I... no way I'm ever going to believe that. No, I don't either. There's no. this great video. Uh, there'll be a link here below. Uh, someone said to me uh, earlier, uh, somebody told me about it and I had to, I had to find it and they gave me the right, uh, verbiage to find it right off the bat. And thank you, uh, to that person. Uh, it was some guy who answers his cell phone in the middle of a exorcism. <laughs> this is a great video. There'll be a link here. Uh, so you don't have to go looking for it, but it's this guy so is like, he goes out, the, the preacher's doing his preacher thing. Oh, come forth and blah, 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 blah. And I'll get rid of the demons. And the guy starts rising on the floor and everything. This phone rings. He's like, hello? Yeah? No, I'm getting, I'm getting exercise right now. Yeah? No, I'll call you back. No, no, I'm, I'm getting exercise right now. I'll call you back. And he hangs up and he's like, okay, where were we? Hello? It's like, and the preacher's like, you're making fun of me. It's like, dude, you're making fun of yourself by believing that you are exercising demons from people. You're fooling yourself. It's a it's a form of uh, personal bias and a cognitive dissonance. Well, you know, the thing about the thing about uh, this kind of deliverance and kind of ministry, I, I know the Catholic Church basically had done it for a very long time, but uh, it was mainly relegated to tent preachers, I guess, you know, like mm-hmm. the 30s and 40s and 50s. But it was a fringe thing. Even um, amongst Christians, it really wasn't very popular. To it was, it was kind of shunned because it was seen as make believe in uh, I would say mainstream like Presbyterian and Lutheran kind mm-hmm. of churches. Uh, and but then when about the time I was born again, about the Jesus movement, you have this very literal uh, interpretations of the Bible. You have uh, evangelism is becoming a door-to-door thing and a street preacher thing, like you see Ray Comfort doing. But when you have a literal Adam and Eve, when you have a literal Jesus casting out demons, and you accept the Bible as being totally true mm. like that, it follows that demons and the devil or Satan or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, are also real. Uh, the same person who wrote the f- book that I was reading when I was born again, uh, Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey, he also penned Satan is alive and well on planet Earth. Right. And about the same time, there were other ministries coming forward, you know, ministers and, and writers coming forward and saying, yeah, this is a real thing. And uh, I don't know, it's, just, it's strange to me, but that's become... You know, and uh, in the Pentecostal movement, they didn't necessarily call it exorcism, but they call it, they have this euphemism. It's, it's exorcism light. Okay. One of the things here is, in modern times, there is a Catholic priest. Uh, his name is Father G- uh, Gabriel Amoth, age 88. He claims to have exorcised 
160,000 demons back to hell. He must have packed up all the bags. Okay, demon, you're out. Okay, I'm going to pack your bags. I'm going to write you a plane ticket. I don't think there's even one person on the entire planet, except for maybe people who work in the airline industry, who worked there for 20 years or whatever, have pa- or personally passed that many people through their gates. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know but those kind do of numbers. you realize that things like this is what keeps the Catholic Church in business. Yes. This is what keeps the Catholic Church rich. Yes. Is people believe it. Do you realize that religion is the biggest con job of all time? It is. It is. There's nothing worse that has happened to human beings, to humanity, than religion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I and agree with you there. They're the biggest con artists, especially. I mean, the Catholic Church is utterly fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So... Here's a, like you said, a Catholic priest who has lied about this. There's no way he even believes himself. That I mean, there's just no way. No, I, I, okay? I, I seriously there's doubt it as well. There's just no way. He is fucking lying, and he knows he's fucking lying. Oh, absolutely. He's okay? making himself to keep his parishioners in check. I guess. Yep. And and in, and in this picture that he's paying holding, their ten percent or whatever the hell they pay. Yep. And in this picture of this this dude, he's holding a cross. Uh, you know, with the little, with the little Jesus on there, you know. I got one of those right here. <laughs> what you want me to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, That's with this particular one, I'm just saying he's showing a torture device. You know, this is what those crosses were. They were torture devices. So right. he, most Christians look at this like this is a revered thing. And like, so he was... Killed in a modern time. Let's say he actually lived in a modern time where there was electricity and they fried him in an electric chair. Would they be wearing little electric chairs around their exactly. neck? Am I or the only one who looks like Elmer Fudd? What's that, Connie? Am I, am I the only one who thinks he looks like Elmer Fudd? He does look like kind of like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> very, very quiet. I'm very, very, very quiet. I, I reject you in the prime of the ward. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> uh, Dawkins dog. He says he's mixing up the number of exorcisms with the number of children he's filled with. Yes, Ooh, exactly. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I'm sure they blame that whole thing on the devil too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, that's their big. I molested those children because I was possessed by demons. Yeah, <laughs> it's proof. Yeah, I read somewhere actually in one of his articles that that was proof that. The devil's work is uh, on the rise. Is those accusations against the Catholic Church? Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird how they 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 use this as their what? scapegoat or their go-to. Uh, that is like, oh well, I I didn't do this. A uh, demon caused me to do it. Well, like and, I said before, God created His own scapegoat. Mm-hmm. Okay, He can blame, and that and they believe it. They buy that shit hook, line, and sinker. Okay, God's so fucking great, right? He does everything. Everything beautiful is because of God. But everything ugly is because of the devil. Right. Who Who's fucking more powerful? Right. And, and, and see, God can always seem to get rid of all his problems or all his enemies except for one. Hmm, why is that? You know, it's it's so, it's so ridiculous. Uh, there was more on here. This priest, he says, I will ask the Pope to give all the priests the power to carry out exorcisms and to ensure priests are properly trained, properly trained, for the, the starting with the summer, seminary. There's a huge demand for them. A demand? You, there's a demand? Why is there, there, there shouldn't even be a demand Because for you brainwash this. people into believing that there's such yep. thing as a fucking devil. Exactly. Well, some of the demand is coming from uh, third oh, world countries. My refrigerator! Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Frigidaire compels you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Connie. I interrupted. Kill it with kill it with free on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. I just uh, I don't remember what I was saying now. <laughs> Talking primate asked a question. Uh, did we hear about the new Exorcist movie? They got. Uh, the devil to come in to take the priest out of the child. Oh! But I'm bump. But I'm bump. I gotta put that rim shot on here yet. I gotta <laughs> say. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, about the number of exorcists. Yeah, yes. that they want them all to be properly trained. I saw that. How it's do you like train somebody in this? <laughs> you know, and the, there's a, there was another movie. There's a, there's a training montage like with Rocky, I'm sure. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. No, there was a movie <laughs> that came out uh, several years ago, uh, The Exorcism of Rose Tyler or Rose yeah. something. And the, oh, it turns yes. out this was this girl. She did have some psychological problems, and then she, of course had, she did. Yeah, and instead mm-hmm. of going to a doctor, they decided to to exercise the demons out of her, and they ended up killing her. A lot of this is nowadays is just plain abuse. And now it's not just the people, the the fucktards that are on Skype going, the power of Christ compels you over Skype to, to the demons to go away or whatever. Or just to do that even in person, you are not doing a good service nowadays with this. You are doing a harm. This is harmful because you are reinforcing a something in their brains to believe this bullshit. And if you're doing it to reinforce their bullshit so they give you money, or even if you're doing it for fucking free, I don't care, you're still reinforcing bullshit onto these unsuspecting people who are too gullible or too naive to understand reality and that really just fucking pisses me off well it's never for free yeah okay because if you're a priest you're doing it for the catholic church and you know nothing's free in the catholic church Mm yeah and it's it's a it is abuse to I mean, think about all these people who don't take their children to the doctor, who don't believe in doctors, they right. believe in prayer and, and so forth. So if one of their children happens to have some form of mental illness for whatever reason, whatever type of mental illness, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Whether they're Catholic or whatever. I mean, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to take the child to a, psycho- a psychiatrist. They're going to take the child to a priest or or a preacher or something to have an exorcism done because there's no way they're going to believe their child has a mental illness. Right. They're just going to think he's possessed by a demon. Now I will give what that's total child abuse. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I will give, I give credit to one priest, one priest. Uh, I can't remember uh, who it was, but it happened over in Poland. This couple, their kid was sick and, or they, they were told originally to uh, pray over the child or whatever. They took it to the priest instead of taking it to the doctor. The priest said, yeah, get him to the doctor. Don't bring him here. Take him to the doctor. The, the one time a priest did the right thing. I, the only time I ever heard a priest do the, say do the right thing. Like, you're not. Don't pray over this child. Take him to a fucking doctor. There's no demons in him. Go take him to a doctor. He's sick. Well, I have to say that the Catholic Church isn't a church that um, doesn't believe in doctors. That's not the church that that would happen in. I right. don't believe. Yeah. Well, it, no. There's no. They actually. They actually uh, have a they set bo- of guidelines for right. exorcism that include making sure nowadays that somebody isn't you know having other other issues i don't know how thoroughly that's researched but uh well here's a here's a case of mental illness that uh andrea yates mm-hmm. yeah. she thought she was possessed and oh, yeah. uh, she thought her children were corrupt and that's why she drowned them yeah the thing is now people look at this and the the st- old story from the Bible, J, uh, is that Joe? No, is what? Uh, oh, I I know you. I know the story. I just can't remember all the actors in this story here. Uh, takes his son up to to slam because God told him to, and supposedly an angel stopped him at the last minute. Abraham. Abraham. Abraham thank you. And A- Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Thank you very much. Yep. And he goes to plunge the knife in his kid's heart. And God supposedly stops him. Supposedly stops him. And people think yep. this is a good thing. It's like, well, I, I obeyed God. No, you listen to a voice in his head. And that's it's anytime. Not, it's that, not that they just think he obeyed God. Okay, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait, God, he, they, they totally disregard the fact God commanded a man to murder his own son. Mm-hmm. Right. And then... They give God all the credit for telling him not to. Right. I what know, but kind of fucking person and they hold a, him up a, tell as an somebody example. to kill their own kid. Right. And they, yeah, but they still hold that up as a good example, as Connie just exactly. said. Exactly. And, that, and that's mm-hmm. not a bad that's a bad example. Any any voice that comes from the blue says, Kill your kid. You tell them, fuck off. Here's the thing about that. Okay, all that all these stories in the Bible with Abraham, uh, Moses 
if anybody today told us mm -hmm. that God spoke to me in my backyard, there was a burning bush in my backyard. And I went to put the fire out and all of a sudden it started talking to me and telling me to do this, that, and the other, we would want to commit that person to a, a mental hospital. Absolutely. And it, I think the burning bush that they're having is probably needs a medical treatment because it's crabs or something. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Jim Gaffigan. Yeah, I think you could have been in some bush. <laughs> Doc and Doc posted this in the chat room, and I, I thank you, Dawkins, and I completely agree. God is supposedly all-knowing, so why the test? It's, I, I've asked those of Christians before as well. It's like, well, if the test isn't for God, it's for man. Why? He already knows the outcome. He doesn't need to test. He he supposedly knows everything that's going to happen before it happens. He doesn't need to test. It's it's stupid. <laughs> yep, the God of the Old Testament is definitely not omniscient. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's. Yeah, I mean, at the, at the very beginning, he says, "Adam, where are you?" Yeah, where are you? <laughs> like, I, where'd you go, Adam? Adam. You don't see him? He's the only person here. You don't. Yeah, see it's him? like yeah, it's not like Adam was on a crowded subway going, "Hey, Adam." Where are you? I can't find you, Adam. <laughs> I lost you at the Safeway, Adam. Where are you? So if people yeah. believe all that shit, why wouldn't they believe that their loved one was possessed by a demon? I yeah. mean, come on. If you believe all that shit, if your loved one has, is a paranoid schizophrenic or something... Of course, you're well, going to believe oh. that he's possessed by a demon. Yeah, because you don't. That they, he's sick. Yeah, that's because yeah. they don't understand psychology. I mean, it's it, it's well, very. People, it, and, no, because it's an psychology. easier way out. It's like oh a yeah, out, actually. No, you're right. It's people it, don't it's an understand way out. a lot of things. No, and you're. And I Connie, don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. I seriously, do, I don't understand it. But I'm. I accept it. I accept that there there's are people more, who well, are paranoid schizophrenics or whatever. It's a chemical imbalance. I, told, I don't get it at all. Yeah, it's okay. a it's a chemical imbalance because we are basically a, a a body of chemicals wrapped in skin, and sometimes chemicals in those brains go woohoo too much of this and not enough of that. But and there are other things that aren't as as serious as that. For instance, um, women who stay with abusive men. That's psychological. I yeah, don't the, get. I mean, I don't get it either. I'm just kind of I'm the kind of person like <laughs> you hit me one time. Fuck you. <laughs> Either I'm going to beat yes. the shit out of you or I'm just going to leave or you're going to leave. Somebody's going to go and you're not coming back. No, I understand. Oh, I get well, that. I How many times say, I love you and I'm so sorry. That, that's a, that's, I, that's that, a whole, that whole dynamic. I, I cannot wrap my head around. Yeah. I, I, I understand that too. There's, there's actually, um, it, it's, uh, what is that syndrome where you're, uh, it's like one where you get kidnapped from Stockholm some, syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, thank you. It's Stockholm syndrome. I don't get that either. Yeah, it's if my first husband had hit me. I would not have stayed if but he it was emotional abuse that was harder mm -hmm. to understand because in some ways I did not see myself as worthy. Right. Uh, but, you know, OK, here I want to ask a question and I don't want to give an excuse or a quarter to people using exorcism. But I think that's really key. I think that it's key that we still stigmatize mental health and we don't understand we, we as a whole don't understand it it's not well funded it's not mm -hmm. well understood and so it might be easier in a in a country that still is primarily religious to think that mental illness is not something wrong with us chemically in our brains but it's something outside of ourselves that is affecting us sort of like you know you catch a cold it's not your fault that you catch a cold that you've caught a cold and it was kind of something that i was reading in one of these articles that packard had found uh, by the psychologist trying to understand the the influx of uh, exorcism because it's it's really strange again in this day and age that we are accepting something as archaic as exorcism over the idea that this is actually a chemical imbalance mm -hmm. in in people's brains it just shows that we don't understand it and we've stigmatized mental health i mean because that would have that would be an imperfection to them yeah that would be exactly. a mistake like and God, God doesn't a mistake. make mistakes. God made yeah. a mistake and put this chemical imbalance in my kid or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, 
So we obviously have to go to, like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we have to go to oh, a demon's possessing them because God doesn't make mistakes, or, or to a greater extent, because, if a baby comes out the, deformed. And again, that makes de- the devil that makes Satan more powerful than than your stupid God. Exactly. This has been mentioned before that when people say that the demons cause them to do something, it's a perfect scapegoat to avoid responsibility for your own actions. I I was uh, dating this lady a number of years ago, and she got away from her soon-to-be ex-husband at that time, and she was saying that he was possessed or something. So it's like you're attributing all his, everything bad that he did to some other entity, so he wasn't responsible for his own actions. So she was basically saying, well, I don't blame him. I blame this invisible, uh, magical thing that was taking control of him because uh, I don't want to uh, give him any credit for his own actions, uh, good or bad. When people do something good or they just act normally, they don't say, oh, yeah, you got a good demon in you, but if somebody screws up or they do something odd or, or they just have, like, a compulsion, oh, it's a demon all of a sudden. Contact us by email at ppappodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter as at Packard at. Like us on Facebook.com slash Packard at. Call our Google Voice and leave a message at 662-709-PPAP or 662-709-7727 and we will respond to it on the show. Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Join us live at vonlive.tv slash Packard at. During the show, you can share your thoughts with us by calling 857-216-3200 using PIN number 35368 or on uberconference.com slash Packard at. For links to the stories, visit our show page at Packard at dot WordPress dot com. You can help support the show by purchasing merchandise from cafepress.com slash Packard Pokeset or make a donation to the show at patreon.com slash Packard Pokeset. If you can't afford any money, why not share the show with your friends and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spreaker, and on YouTube. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. I've never understood about this is they say sometimes by uh, watching a movie, by doing a thing or wanting to do a thing, you inviting demons into you, but you still have to invite God into you. Also, it's the same concept. It's just a different thing. You're calling one thing to the other. You're like, I'm accepting blue into my heart. No, I'm accepting red into my heart. Just because you assign a word to something doesn't make it any more true. Well, that's what I really hate about, I mean, I like scary movies, and I don't, you know, I mean, they, but I hate that people who have this mindset watch movies like The Exorcist or The Possession of uh, the Possession or anyone, any number of like the 13 plus supposedly based on real events movies that Hollywood's put out, and they don't see it as entertainment, and they don't question it at all. They see it, and they say, this is true. This is real. Look at they've made a movie about it and and they just run with it. I'm like, really? In this day and age, we can't differentiate between entertainment and reality and just yeah. take a few more minutes and and research something, especially when you have. To, but again, we're not taught how to look at anybody can post anything on the Internet. Oh, yeah. So I just yeah, it's very frustrating to me. But to see that there's this huge disconnect still I, at this, I got, in, in this day. I've got another example. Another person I know and another lady I dated. Uh, she, there was this movie where they had Boy, cameras. He's quite a playboy, isn't he? Hey, you budget. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've dated a few times. Uh, <laughs> I'm divorced. I'm not like I'm dating and while I'm married. they've all been possessed. They've all been possessed. Uh, <laughs> they had a little something in them at one time. <laughs> A little something. Right? A little something. I'm not saying. Uh, I was poking around. Huh? I was poking around. And <laughs> <laughs> this lady I knew, this lady I was dating for a short time, uh, she had uh, saw this movie where they supposedly had all these cameras in the house. I, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, and supposedly all this weird stuff had happened. And it was all captured on camera. 
And she's like, this was a real documentary. It's like, no, it wasn't. It was all faked. <laughs> And I, it's like no, I had, and I had to go, I had to research it and looked it up. It's like, yeah, this is based on a book, which is based on nothing, nothing. It was no real event. <laughs> yep. People are, and you're right. People are so fucking gullible. gullible. Some people are, some people are more gullible than other people. They see a thing on a movie or a TV, and as I said earlier, they believe it to be true. So they like, they freak out. I over used it. to be that gullible. I really was. I I, I, I'm not, I try not, and I work so hard not to be now, but I was. Mm -hmm. I think so, we all yeah. were at some point on something. Go ahead, go ahead Robin, though. You want... Yeah, go ahead, well, Robin. No, well, I had a woman who worked for me um, mm -hmm. uh, a while back. And like I said, like I told you before, I'm from New Orleans. Voodoo's kind of a deal there, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a big deal there. Yeah. But it, for me, it's just a big fat joke. And for most people there, it's, it's really just a joke. So every time I go there, I buy voodoo dolls at the flea market for a dollar, you know, and I bring them home and give them to people. Mm -hmm. So I always had one at work in this little drawer. I had it tucked away. And um, it was a joke, a running joke in the department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I would whip it out for, you know, something, some stupid customer came in or whatever. So this, this person started working with me and um, I found her to be normal and seemingly le level headed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but come to find out after she left. Now, I didn't have really a personal connection with this woman. We didn't hang out after work or anything like that. It was just an at work relationship. OK, mm -hmm. so we weren't friends outside of work. So after she quit working there, I find out from another person that she was offended by the voodoo doll. OK, <laughs> so oh. I'm like seriously and the person's like yeah she said you don't realize she's very evidently she was very religious and these are conversations i try not to have with people at work oh, okay mm -hmm. i try and keep that kind of stuff separate um if they ask me about things i'll talk to them about it but i i don't get try and get involved in those kind of conversations with people so evidently this person was very religious okay she was she had some problems with her children her her son her oldest kid uh, was a drug addict mm. and her daughter beautiful girl mom was very overbearing okay uh. i could tell that she's very overbearing mm -hmm. trying to get this girl in all the plays at school and you know modeling all kinds of stuff but the daughter i guess was rebelling against it mm -hmm. okay so that's another thing that people she's point offended to. by my voodoo dolls she went down she flew down to south america somewhere mm-hmm and she went to some kind of, I guess, shaman or something to get the black mask removed from her children because evidently they had some kind of black mask is what they called it Oy vey. on them. Oh. And we're talking about someone in the 2000s. OK. Wow. A modern American woman uh. who actually believed, and she paid these people like ten thousand dollars. Holy okay. crap! Yes. We're in the to wrong get... line. We're in the wrong line of business, Robin. I'm telling I'm just... you, right? And Holy my voodoo shit. dolls evidently would work. Wow! And she was afraid of it. She was a scared of it. Wow! If that voodoo doll had a bullet in it, I'd be scared of it too. But it, it, it's a doll. At the time, it, I actually it was sometime a little bit after 9/11, uh, I think. No. And at the time, I had him dressed up like uh, Osama bin Laden. Oh. <laughs> oh I had a little. I would have put. I would have dressed it like Bush. I would have dressed it like Bush. Like. <laughs> well, you know, at the time, I was, I was, you know, Osama yeah. bin Laden was my enemy too, just like everybody else. Yeah. So. We had, we had, oh uh, before we go on, I just need a uh, comment here from one of our contributors here, Fecal Matter. Thank you, Fecal Matter. Oh, Fecal Matter, nice. <laughs> nice oh, he's thing. in the holy water. Remember? Yeah, he's in the fecal. He's in the water. Uh, That's the what I was trying to say that Fecal Matter is he, actually he's in the everywhere. Water. Fecal Matter is everywhere. He, he he made or they made a great. I don't know if it's male or female at this point. Uh, they they said the fact is that someone susceptible to certain ideas could point to a chemical imbalance in the brain. But social factors should also be taken into account. I think that's a great point. I, mm -hmm. I think in some cases, I think that, it, and I, that's the the movie and the TV stuff 
is right in there. That's all combined. It's it's nature, a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture, I guess, uh, in those regards. Uh, you, the movie would be the external uh, influence, but I mean, it's those beliefs that you have uh, right. going in. I mean, if you believe something or you have the chemical imbalance that's in your brain to make you more susceptible to one thing or the other, then yeah, you could. I mean, we, we've all been guilty of it to believe something that wasn't true for any certain amount of time. Connie was mentioning something. Uh, myself, I believed a certain thing uh, about myself I could do until for a very long time and until I realized it was something I had seen on TV when I was a very young child. I found the TV show again a uh, number of years ago. I go, oh, my God, this is where I got this idea from. And I never fucking, for whatever reason, I never fucking let it go. Because it just made me feel good. But it didn't impact uh, anything in my life. It didn't hurt anybody because I didn't go around, you need to believe this because I said a demon's causing it. You know, it, it was just my own little uh, cognitive dissonance, my own little uh, personal bias, and it, it was really stupid. And now that I, I, I've watched that and I'm like, oh, my God, this is where I got the idea from, I'm like, that reinforced the idea that this was stupid to begin with. So, <laughs> and it was just <laughs> something was supposed to be fun for a child kind of carried with me. I mean, we carry little things throughout our lives. We don't get rid of all of it, but we try. I mean, we, we I mean, for a good well, portion of us, we try to get rid of all the, the childhood shit. And some people just hang on to it like it's Santa Claus for adults, as, as people have exactly, uh, said that. Yeah. Exactly yeah. that. And that's the problem is that religion, of uh, all the in, you know, superstitious ideas like religion, are modeled by other adults. Mm -hmm. You you have all the rituals and all of the stuff that surrounds that, and uh, sometimes you know it's just the whole idea that it's a ritual and it's it's a tribal thing that uh, we we latch onto that at long past the time when we believe in the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus. I know how offensive that is to a lot of religious people but that's the same thing except that we just didn't have churches built to those things yeah uh, we don't have that modeled and we don't have songs to it and we don't have blah 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 so yeah we have uh, songs to the easter bunny don't we <laughs> <laughs> wait here comes peter cottontail yep <laughs> i believe but you but, know, you know if, was... if these people have, i mean anybody who actually believes in god has to believe in the devil right oh yeah I would think so. They so they have yes. to believe in demons. Yeah. Now the story that to. now the story that was told to me from this guy, this individual that I was working with. This was the story he relayed to me, and I don't. I, I, well, he was talking to me about it. My my alarm bells and whistles were going off, and when I relay the story to you, if your alarm bell whistles aren't going off, you go get yourself checked out. I'll this mute is my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> He was saying that some woman, some girl, young girl, came to stay with them for a while, and he had supposedly uh, was his dad was like talking to her or whatever, and supposedly she freaked out, and she had attacked his dad, and 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 but she, him being a big strong guy as he was, he was unable to pull her off of him and thought it was like some kind of supernatural possession because it was she was suddenly super strong this 90 pound girl was fighting off a 200 pound guy i'm like yeah that's a possibility too size matters not <laughs> <laughs> you it's don't really know yoda <laughs> she could be very that's right she could have exactly she had the force she had the Jude. force <laughs> she's a <Judah>. Jedi. <laughs> yeah and then he claimed that the next day she didn't remember any of it, supposedly. Now, this had happened like 20 years prior. So the thing with memories is it doesn't matter how good you think your memory is. In a lot of places, it's really shoddy. And and this has been proven. Uh, oh, yes. You, you add stuff. Yep. You add stuff, you, you subtract mean, it stuff. It happens to everyone. Everybody. So you, <laughs> you try to remember it a certain way, but errors creep in. So what you think you remember, you don't actually remember and this is true for everybody even me uh, connie and robin it's, oh, everybody yes. in the world that you just because you think you remember something doesn't you can remember you where you left your car keys but sometimes you think you left your car keys there you go to pick them up 
they're not there. But mm-hmm. I, I, I digress. Um, but the, <laughs> I digress a little bit. You usually do. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm taking. Were we? I, I'm taking. I'm bunny training myself yeah, off here. Turn it Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing my, is, my son at uh, he went through a well. He didn't go through a phase. But I I always taught my children to, um, uh, about you know old music and stuff. Like mm-hmm. they would, that's what we listen to in the car all the time. So yeah. they always had a nice respect for where you know old music where it came from, right? Right. So my son kind of fell in love with Queen, especially because of Bohemian Rhapsody, ah. so, right? So he he would just devour Queen when he was like. 16 17 years old so um i i was telling him about this movie that i saw back in the day uh flash gordon remember that oh yeah i remember that movie and i said oh my god there's just like (laughs) it's queen songs in it it's just so awesome right Uh so we rented it we rented the movie and watched it and it it really wasn't just a bunch of queen songs it was (laughs) one song through the entire movie. <laughs> but I remembered it as this awesome, you know, the movie was retarded, but the soundtrack was wonderful. And that, it was really that only about that tr- one that song, scene. that song, God. Flash, uh-huh. uh, uh, Savior of the Universe. <laughs> hey, I believe in Flash. I believe in Flash more than I believe in God. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Pre-initiation scene was probably the gayest thing that I've ever seen in my life. Oh my, oh my God. goodness, that movie. it was so oh. glorious! It was so good. <laughs> and the, my son the actually woman, has the, the, woman the soundtrack on a tape, and it, it was like this was is the one it? song, like you said. <laughs> you remember the woman who was in the movie? She was the yeah. Worst, oh yeah, the yeah. worst. Yeah, she oh, actress. Yeah, she planet. was not a very good actress. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There was a there was a few ladies in there as I recall, but uh, the, if you're talking about the main actress, yeah, the she main w- the main character. Well, besides Flash, well, and and then if you if you're calling this particular lady the worst actor on the planet, mm-hmm. next to the guy who played Flash Gordon, that's saying a lot because yeah. that guy he was bad. Yeah, he was bad too. <laughs> oh yes, he was just pretty. That's all. Yeah. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> oh gosh. But uh, and the thing is, he, the the guy was also telling me about how he, his do, his father had had uh, some kind of experience where he was in the hospital, you know, the the so uh, out of body experience and the whole nine yards. And he started doing this after that fact that he was like, uh, "I'm going to start practicing uh, this exorcism stuff after all this event." And he said all this stuff had happened, and his you know the the brain is breaking down. And I asked him point blank. I said, if you had knew you had a car that the engine was really bad, would you take that engine? Or would you take that car and drive it across the country, knowing that the fact is that it's on the verge of breaking down? And he said, no. I said, then why would you trust a brain that had broken down and was breaking down at that point that any information coming out of it was worth anything? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm right there with you. But then he still reinforced his own belief that his father was still being able to do an exorcist because of this event. That's, that you, you completely contradict yourself when you say stuff like that. I, I blame tribalism. I, I mean, obviously, that's his dad. It, he has a stake in that. Mm-hmm. And no, I, I agree. Know, thinking that, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, can't we divorce ourselves from this idea? It's just. No. Yeah, no. I know. I, I completely agree. I mean, exactly. It, it, it for me, it doesn't matter if if a family member say, comes to me and says, you know, a a, a very uh, weird thing happened to me. It's like, well, I try to explain it as best you can, and we'll try to see if we can't figure it out. If it's something we can't figure out, then then we just say, well, I just can't figure it out. That's it. it we're not going to attribute any deity or whatever to it for it to have had happened. A bad thing or a good thing. It doesn't really matter. Well, speaking of speaking of family, uh, there was a blog that you shared. Uh, belief in demonic possession has led to great suffering. And yep. um, I loved this story that actually linked from this article. And uh, this the author talked about a friend that he'd had in high school. Yeah, I read that. And uh, yeah, and the 
the friend was actually from a, a very, very fundamentalist family. Uh, both mother and father were preachers and they had speaking in tongues and whatnot. And, yeah. Um, this, this, the friend, uh, Ty- Tyler, which I don't think was his real name, but, um, the friend was basically not the favorite child the do- the younger sister was. And, uh, they went the the author of the okay the author of the blog said they were into metal music and doing all this other stuff and yeah. when the parents found out uh they cut off his contact with this friend with the friend and his friend um had all of his albums his metal music albums uh burnt in front of him well then one night he was awakened with 10 adults standing around him in the middle of the night and they and and this young man endured like a i don't know how long how many hours exorcism and the he said he said his friend was never the same after that uh it was it was just really horrific we we um, covered something like that here on the show uh several months ago maybe like late last year where there a school a school or church or religion, whatever they had, mm-hmm. were doing an exorcism of some sort, and one person died. One kid died. The other one was in critically injured. Oh yes, that was a yeah. very very private sect. Yeah, uh, and I don't even know what happened beyond that. There were two. Was it two brothers? Yeah, it was two brothers. One one yes. yeah, one was beat. They beat the child so badly that he died. Yes, and the other one went went to critical. I wish that I'd followed up on that. I wish I'd thought about that. Uh, before the show tonight. Religion is not a mental illness. Well, this mm. was just a fit case of these kids were wanting to leave the sect. Yeah. They they just didn't want to be a part of it. It was, ex- you know, there was uh, homeschooling. I understand that, but what, what what you just said about the uh, the other story you were talking about oh, and the 10 okay. people around the bed yes. doing an exorcism because the kids were listening to metal music. Yeah. Yes. If that yeah. if th- the parents and those eight other people that were surrounding that bed, if they don't have a fucking mental illness, who does? Right. Exactly. Yeah, I've got that one up here. It says uh, Tony. Tony uh, was told yes. that he was possessed by demons, and the group was there was going to exercise them by any means necessary. Okay, those are three very dangerous words. Any means necessary. When you hear those words, fucking run. I wish he could have. They surprised him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were people sitting on all of his limbs, holding him down, and there was a physical... And again, this is a secondhand account, but we do have other accounts uh, post-mortem. Well, that's not... Yeah, that's not the first time I've heard a story no, like that. Not. Yeah. No, no. It's really sad. It and is. he eventually... The, the Tony confessed... Because and he said uh, he said his friend told you know gave them what they wanted. Yeah. He knew what they wanted, but he was always uh, looking over his shoulder. He was never the same. Yeah. I think uh, his, I th- and his parents kicked him out of the house. Yeah. I think a lot of it the, when it comes down to the exorcism stuff, I think it comes down to uh, one of a few things. Uh, one is it's it's for show. You're trying to get attention because you're a fucking attention whore. You want everybody to say, hey, everybody, look at me. Basically, what it boils down to, too, or the second thing is that you're going to do this thing because it, it's expected of you. Because that's what you think a demon is going to do to you. So you automatically just jump out and start jumping around like, because they think this is what's supposed to happen when a demon is inside you. So, and for the last one, I think it, it's a combination of those two together. Yeah. Uh, oh, we, yeah. We, 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 we're, we're a quick comment here from the chat room. Talking Primate. Thank you, Talking Primate. Demon Possession is real. They made Police Academy 5. <laughs> 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 they should have stopped at one. 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 Yeah, exactly. That was a pretty funny movie, but the rest of them, oh, holy no, shit. No, the rest of it was a fucking, every oh, one yes. after that was a train wreck, so, but. Yeah. Big fat, so, oh my God. <laughs> Evidently, we like a good train wreck. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we do. The one I watched last night was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> and Trump was the engineer. Woo, woo. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> If, it, if a demon possession, right if, 
right? If demon possession and was those are some people who are possessed by demons. Yeah, I was just gonna say if demon <laughs> possession was real, the whole GOP is full of them. I'm just saying. <laughs> those people are. Fur- Listen, I d- okay, so they're all. I mean, if you didn't watch it, you gotta find it and you gotta fucking watch it. <laughs> the three of them are going at each other, right? The three top ones are going at each other, uh-huh. and then they finally get to Ben Carson, and he's talking about. People who are the fruit salad of life. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I'm talking what? about. This is the, the, the stuff I'm talking about. The, the mental uh, stuff that people pile on top of each other to make them believe certain things. Here's a guy who's a brain surgeon. And he's talking, at, running for president and talking about how people I, are the fruit salad of life. I think oh, this guy, I think he, he operated on himself somehow. I think that if he, I think the brain surgery was done on dogs and cats and animals, not humans. <laughs> that dog was walking a little funny after the brain surgery from Ben Carson. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those people are possessed by demons. And, you know, I mean, even um, Scalia, Judge Scalia, yeah, he believed that the devil was an actual being. Oh, yeah, he did. He believed it to the fullest. Yes. Well, he looked in the mirror every day and saw it. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looked in the mirror, there was little horns and a pointy beard. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're getting close to the end of the show here. Connie, what, uh, when it comes to exorcism, what is your take, your last final take on this? I think that everybody should exercise at least three times a week. (laughs) He stole my answer. (laughs) If you want to know what ails you, look at science, look at the medical field, and uh, just definitely, you know, no, don't blame the devil because he actually told the truth. Yeah. Right. Exactly. (laughs) All right, Robin, what what are your last thoughts on... Uh, exorcisms and demon possession and all this happy horse shit. I'm still waiting for my split pea soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thought. I'm sorry. It's a, it's the kitchen has grown out. I thought we were going to be puking soup. up split pea soup tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this? <laughs> The kitchen, she has Fernando split, please. <laughs> it is Friday. We are having the clam chowder. <laughs> Ew, I throw that up. <laughs> <laughs> Tor- I, Torvin kind of pretty much agrees with you. He said, final thoughts on exorcism, head spins, and projectile vomit. There you go. I think that sums it up pretty nicely. <laughs> Which none of that actually ever happens. This. Listen, my final thoughts are this. Okay. okay. Quit with the scapegoating. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you have yep. a problem, solve it. Right. No, there's yep. no scapegoat. Exactly. In life, there is no fucking scapegoat. Right. And my final thoughts on this is that you're practicing bullshit. Stop it. Stop it, I say. Stop, Stop it. it. You're 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 <laughs> putting stupid ideas into people's heads. You are not helping. You're causing a greater harm by telling people they're infected with demons. And that demons are a thing that you can take away from your body to make you better. Yep. All righty. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming to the chat room. Uh, Robin, where can they find your channel? Or they, where can they find Robin your channel? Robin Dupree Reed. Just type that in. You'll see me. Yeah, it's the Chad uh, 1242. I don't even remember. 1218. 1218. 1218. The, the, the Chad, Chad 1218. There you go. <laughs> Yay. That's a story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to know about that story, just go back to the archives and watch the interview yes. with Robin. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Robin. Thank you for having me. I love coming on your show. Oh, well, thank you very much for yes. We, we enjoy having you here. All righty. Well, we got to get out of here. Um, oh, by the way, before we get out of here, finally, one last thing. Uh, I mentioned this in the after show several times. We are starting a second podcast and we've started to finally do some recordings on this and it will showing up in the iTunes stream uh, here in the next few weeks. So if uh, at least for a little while before it moves to its own home, as it were, on iTunes. So if you want to catch that show, you have to subscribe to Packard Pokeset on iTunes or Stitcher or the website at PackardPokeset.wordpress.com. It'll be in there as well for a few weeks 
uh, while we do this. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm not giving out the name just yet, um, but the web page is up. The Facebook page is up and the Twitter account is up. So in the next few weeks, we'll give you the name of that show and the, the podcast will be out. It has Connie and I in it and uh, we have a good fun with this. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Anyway, all right, uh, we'll see you next week in our regular long show, regular long show. Until then, this has been Packard Pokes that we just poked at your okay, let's talk. And that's a wrap.